You've probably seen the copper ball by now, the brand new block being added to Minecraft. Every Minecraft YouTuber known to man has posted their opinion on it. But I want to offer a bit of a different perspective, one from someone who doesn't make typical redstone. You see, I don't make doors or farms or flying machines. I make what people call logical redstone or computational redstone. I like to make games, simulations, computers, basically anything that has to do with math or logic. And when I saw the copper bulb, I wondered, does it make logical redstone better? So in this video, I'm going to review the copper bulb, but only from the perspective of logical redstone. And I'll show you why I probably won't be using it that much. Let's get started. So what is a copper bulb? It's a new block where if you power it, it turns on, and if you power it again, it turns off. It just toggles between two different states. And you can read the state with a comparator. When the bulb is on, the comparator gives a full signal strength output, and when it's off, it gives nothing. When it was first released, it took one game tick to toggle, but now in the latest snapshot, it toggles instantly. You might think that's a positive change because it's getting faster, but this has actually been a huge point of controversy because having a one game tick delay makes the copper bulb way more useful for a lot of redstone. My friends Crafty and Purplers both made great videos explaining this if you want to check them out. But I'm not going to talk about that because in logical redstone, honestly, this change doesn't really matter. Having it be instant or one game tick doesn't affect how useful it is when building a game or a computer. But for reference, I'll be using the instant version of the copper bulb for the entirety of this video. So with that out of the way, what do I think about this block? Well, right off the bat, I think this toggling property is pretty cool. It makes the copper bulb a one block T flip flop. T flip flops are used all the time in logical redstone. I just used one the other day while making Minesweeper. So if I ever need a single T flip flop, I think the copper bulb is undeniably the best way to go. It's smaller and faster than any of the previous designs. But what else can you do with this block? Well, the first thing I saw a lot of people using it for is user interfaces. For example, let's say you have some settings in a redstone game where each one can be turned on or turned off. This is typically done with levers and redstone lamps. You can turn on or turn off whatever settings you want and take an output from repeaters on the other side. Copper bulbs offer an alternative approach for this. You can just have a row of bulbs with buttons on them and take the output using comparators. Just like the lamp design, you can turn on or turn off whatever you want. But when you compare these two designs, I actually like the lamp version better because having a lever makes it immediately clear to the user that it's a toggle. They don't have to read any signs or anything. They know just by the fact that it's a lever that it can only be on or off. Unlike a button where I don't know if this is a toggle or if it just sends a pulse somewhere or what. Also, you might be wondering why not just put levers directly on the lamps like how these buttons are? And that's because redstone lamps are a solid block, so powering one directly will power the ones around it. Whereas copper bulbs are transparent, so they don't affect the ones around them. But still, I like the lamp design better simply because of what levers signify to a user. Another popular user interface is the button selector panel, where only one selection is allowed at a time. This right here is a design for it using lamps. So if I press a button, it turns that one on, and if I press a different button, it switches to that one. And once again, copper bulbs offer an alternative approach. This design right here is by Crafty, and it's honestly pretty tiny. It works just like the lamp version, because it just switches to whatever button you press. So in this case, I actually think the copper bulb version is a little bit better. It's smaller, and it's more natural for a button selector. However, me personally, I wouldn't use either of these circuits in practice. I think when a button selector panel becomes one wide per button, it gets harder to understand. I always have to spend a minute or two looking at the observers and the droppers and reminding myself how it works. So call me old if you want, but when I need a button selector panel, I like to use this, which has been around for like 10 years. It just uses dust, repeaters, and torches. I feel like it's just easier to understand how this design works. You can clearly see the SR latches on the bottom and how all the resets are oared together. Yes, it's two wide and not one wide, but I actually think that's a good thing too, because the data is more spread out and it's much easier to work with. In general, I try to find a balance between making my circuits small and readable. And in this case, I think the classic circuit is the winner. The last type of user interface that's been really popular with the bulbs is a 2D screen, where the player can essentially draw a picture. So here I have a grid of bulbs with buttons and I can literally make whatever picture I want. I don't think it was possible before to have one by one inputs and instant visual feedback, so that's really cool. I mean, you could wire some buttons to a screen, but copper bulbs are now an input and a screen combined. Redstone lamps can't do that because, again, they're a solid block. So this is really great if you want the user to be able to draw something on a screen. However, I would probably never use this for one simple reason. 
It's one by one block per pixel. If you wanna do anything useful with this data, like sending it to another screen or maybe running a convolution on it, then the data is way too close together. You're gonna to end up having to use some circuit to either spread it out or serialize it. So I would rather just use inputs that are already two by two blocks in size. This allows you to skip the step of spreading them out since they're already far enough apart. You can just take the outputs directly with comparators. And now that we're in a 2x2 situation, I would rather use lamps because of the same reasoning from before. Levers signify toggles better than buttons. The only problem with this is that it's harder to tell what the picture looks like since the display is more spread out. For example, this smiley face is way more clear than this one. And there's no perfect solution for this, but you can mitigate this problem by using a screen like this. These are 2x2 two two inputs, where each input has a note block and three lamps around it to show you the status. If I click a note block, you can see that it toggles the three lamps around it. So from a distance, this makes the picture look a lot better. I don't think it looks as good as a 1x1 one one picture, but I think it's worth it to not have to do that extra wiring to spread it out. So yeah, this whole thing was basically just a long way of saying that copper bulbs are really good for 1x1s, one but I'll personally be sticking with 2x2 two two lamp designs. Next, let's talk about memory, because everyone and their mom is making new copper bulb memory devices. There are two main types of memory used in Minecraft, read-only memory and read-write memory. Read-only memory, or ROM, is pretty self-explanatory. You can only read it. This is used whenever you want to store something that doesn't need to be changed. And when it comes to ROM, I've yet to find a situation where the copper bulb can help. I mean, sure, if you want to store one bit of information and read it later, you can do that with a copper bulb and a comparator. Just cancel this comparator from the side, and when you want to read it, stop canceling the comparator. If it's storing a 1, it'll read 1, and if it's storing a 0, it'll read 0. But you can also do this with a redstone block. Just place a redstone block to store a 1, or don't place it to store a 0. Or better yet, use barrels. Barrels let you store any signal strength value from 0 to 15, which is an entire hex digit. And there are even ways to store more information than that using shulker boxes. So yeah, I feel like ROM is a solved problem and copper bulbs don't really help. But what about read-write memory? Read-write memory is different because you can read it or write to it. There are a bunch of different ways to make this, but the most common way to do it is with repeater locks. For example, this right here is one bit of read-write memory. You can write to it by putting the data here, either a 0 or a 1, and quickly unlocking and relocking the latch. Then you can read it by just uncancelling this comparator. So I played around a little bit and tried making some read-write memory designs with copper bulbs, and I realized pretty quickly that copper bulbs are not the easiest thing in the world to write to. For example, if you want to write a 1, you might think that you can just hook it up like this. And I wouldn't blame you, because on the first time, it looks like it writes a 1. But if the bulb is already a 1, then this doesn't write a 1, it writes a 0. To actually write to a copper bulb, you need to use an XOR gate. If the state of the bulb is the same as what you want to write, you don't need to do anything. But if the state of the bulb is different than what you want to write, you need it to toggle. So as you can see, if the state of the bulb is 0 and we want to write a 1, then the XOR gate outputs 1 and it will toggle. But now that they're the same, 1 and 1, the XOR gate outputs 0 because it doesn't need to toggle. So if we press write, it just doesn't do anything. This is why, in my opinion, copper bulbs are a terrible fit for read-write memory, because writing to them requires you to look at their own state. But I didn't completely give up. I tried my best to see if the copper bulb could improve some of the current best repeater lock designs. For example, this is a design for read-write memory that I've used a bunch of times. It's made up of 8 copies of 8-bit modules, so it has a total of 64 bits of memory. And then this is my best attempt at making the same thing using copper bulbs. It's noticeably bigger, although not as big as I thought it was going to be. The repeater lock design is 2x2x9 two by two by per bit, and the copper bulb design is 2x2x13. Two by two by and I guarantee someone else could make it even smaller. I mean, the repeater lock design is the result of years of development, but the copper bulb hasn't even been out that long. So it's totally possible that a future design would be smaller or faster and convince me to start using it. But until then, I'm just going to stick with repeater locks for memory, because they don't need an XOR gate, and they're a natural data latch. However, there is one thing copper bulbs have that repeater locks don't. Copper bulbs are movable, which means you can do stuff like this. This is a spinning read-write memory, which was definitely not possible before. It even has a clear function, which sets all the bits to zero as they kind of spin past this needle. I probably wouldn't make anything like this for a logical redstone build, but I gotta admit, it's still really cool. I absolutely love the creativity. 
And look, if copper bulbs being added means that people are gonna make more creative builds, then I'm a huge supporter. I love seeing creative redstone builds, even if it's not my field. Next, let's talk about another popular build, a binary counter. If you didn't know, you can make a binary counter by chaining T flip-flops together. This counter actually counts down, so three, two, one, etc. But if you want it to count up, you can just invert all the outputs. Now it goes from one, two, three, you get the idea. This is pretty cool because before the copper bulb, you would have had to use a bigger T flip-flop design, which made the counter a lot bigger. And I think this is a fantastic way to demonstrate binary counting. It's simple and intuitive, but here's the thing. If you're using a binary counter in a logical redstone build, you probably shouldn't use this design. It's unsynchronized. Notice that if I start with all ones and press count, the output ripples across and they all get there at different times. Again, if you just wanna play around with counting or show it to your friends, then by all means, this is a great way to do it. But when it comes to using counters in a real build, I typically use a synchronized design so that it doesn't cause problems later on. And when it comes to synchronized designs, the copper bulb doesn't really make them any better. For example, this is a synchronized 8-bit counter using repeaters. When I press this button, it counts up and all the outputs arrive at the same time, every time. And this is the same thing using copper bulbs. They're pretty much the same size. Now, just like with memory, someone is bound to make this design smaller. Copper bulbs haven't been around for that long. But the thing is, no matter how small this gets, I probably still won't use it because there's another problem. Like I said before, copper bulbs are annoying to write to, which means it's annoying to reset this counter. If I want this counter to go back to zero, I have to read the state of all the bulbs. Whereas with the repeater design, you can just unlock all the repeaters and flush them out. In fact, with a little more modification, you can write anything to this repeater lock counter, not just a zero. With this design, I can put in a seven for example, press right, and now I can start counting up from seven. Then I can put in a zero, press right again, and now I can count up from zero. Just for fun, I went ahead and tried making a copper bulb version anyways, and this is what I came up with. And it works the exact same way. You can write stuff to it or count up, but it's a lot bigger. And again, I bet someone will make a smaller one, but for now, I'm sticking with the repeater lock design to avoid those annoying XORs. Finally, let's talk about how copper bulbs are used in screens. Since copper bulbs hold their state, you can make a perfectly flat screen with anything you want on it. This isn't possible with redstone lamps because you would need to power them from behind. So that's pretty cool. I might actually use this. Another cool thing you can do with them is this. I saw this in a mumbo jumbo video. It kind of looks like the screen is flipping between light mode and dark mode. This was possible with just redstone lamps, although it was a lot more complicated. But beyond these small display tricks, I'll probably never use copper bulbs for an actual logical redstone build because they're extremely difficult to reset. Sure, they're pretty easy to draw something onto, but once you draw it, the only way to get rid of it is to draw it again. To reset the screen, you have to access the bulbs XOR them with zero, and then wire that back into the screen, which is pretty much impossible. There just isn't enough room. So this is pretty annoying for most of my builds. When you have a screen hooked up to a game or a computer, being able to reset it is extremely important. Also, I feel like using lamps is just more natural when you have things moving on the screen. For example, when I made Flappy Bird, I used this circuit to resemble the bird. It falls along these torches like it has gravity, and when you press this button, it jumps. So when you put a lamp screen on it, of course, it looks pretty good. The lamps are just mirroring whatever's on the torches. A copper bulb screen doesn't work like this. Copper bulbs just toggle themselves. They don't actually mirror anything. So the circuitry has to get more complicated to make up for that. Because now when you want to move something, you not only have to power the new place, but also power the old place to turn it off. So copper bulbs are just not ideal for this. Another way to put this is that I don't want my screen to have state. If I need state, I'll build it with redstone. But a screen, in my opinion, should just help show what the redstone is doing. That's it. Now, do I think there are games where a copper bulb screen makes more sense? Absolutely. For example, Lights Out is perfect for copper bulbs because it's all about toggles. It's just that in general, I think lamps are much better because they display the redstone directly. But what about color screens? Could those be improved with the copper bulb? This actually gets brought up a lot because copper bulbs come in four different variations, each with a different color. So people have thought of using these for the red, green, and blue of an RGB screen. And this is a good idea, but unfortunately, it doesn't work very well in practice. RGB screens work because each color, red, green, and blue, has 256 different brightness levels. So by changing these brightnesses, it tricks your brain into seeing different colors when it's really small. 
but copper bulbs only have two brightness levels, on and off. So the most colors you're gonna get out of a copper bulb screen is eight, two times two times two. For reference, here's what that looks like. It's okay, it looks better with a texture pack at least, but it's still copper bulbs, so good luck resetting the screen or using it for a game. The good news is, there were already plenty of better options for RGB screens. One option is to have a bunch of red, green, and blue concrete, and cover up different amounts of them using trapdoors. My friend Torb actually used this on his computer. Here's how it looks while playing Tetris. Another option is to use maps. These have 64 color choices, and they look pretty good. Here's my friend Crafty using them for Minesweeper. And for a third option, you can use a texture pack to change each redstone dust signal strength into a different color. Here's my friend Mod Punchtry using this in his computer. So if I ever need an RGB screen, I'm just gonna use one of these options, which in my opinion are all better than copper bulbs. I really don't want you guys to get the wrong idea about this video. Overall, I still think adding copper bulbs to the game was a great idea. I'm a fan of it. They invoke creativity, they expand the options for what's possible, and they've got people talking about Minecraft more, which is always a good thing. It's just that I, personally, won't be using them much, and I hope this video did a decent job explaining why. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys.